want to talk about room acoustics. A medium priced, medium quality, hi-fi system, complete system with everything all included for under 2000 euros, will probably sound better in a, an acoustically balanced room than the most expensive hi-fi in a poor room. And I find it really sad that a lot of people spend a lot of money on all sorts of gadgets and gizmos, um, you know, equipment, improving the amplifier, improving the speakers. And you go to their listening rooms and they're just appalling. They've got terrible echoes. They, they, they just don't sound nice. And I think this is a very important fact that I want to share. No matter whether you listen to classical music, rock and roll, jazz, blues, funk, death metal, punk, whatever you like, drum and bass, there was one thing that all of those types of music have in common, and that is, after the recording is made, in its situation, it is always mixed down in a mixing room. Now, no matter where you go, from Abbey Road down to my friend Pierre Nicholas's studio, Sonata Productions, down the road from here, there's going to be one thing in common. All the rooms where the mixing takes place are going to be acoustically dead. And they're certainly dead when the band comes in to listen or the musicians all come in to listen on the studio monitors. If you clapped your hands, there'll be no echo or next to no echo at all. There's a little bit of echo in this listening room, but not much. And so you can imagine that the, the engineers who are mixing this music have got their hands on the control panels. They've got all the tracks in, they've, they've mastered them all down and they're mastering them all now and they're mixing it all. They're listening on a pair of maybe Yamaha, you know, the white coned Yamahas um, or ATCs or whatever. And they've got the small ones and maybe the bigger ones. And they're listening to them until it sounds exactly right how they want it. They're adjusting the echo to the minutiae amount. Oh, no, it's a bit too much on the voice. Oh, let's pull that back a bit. Let's give it a bit more on the drum. With boom on the drum instead of a boom on the drum. Until they got it perfect. And they're, making, they're doing that, making those decisions in a room that's more or less acoustically dead. So then the CD is made or it's streamed or whatever and then you come to the shop and you buy your CD and you come home and you slot it in the machine or you stream it down from Spotify or wherever. Now, if your room has got lots of echo in it, what you've just done is ignored the engineer in the music room saying, no, 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 I don't want this amount of echo. We're going to have lots of echo. Now, I understand that most of us live in normal houses and we can't all afford to have dedicated listening rooms like I have the luxury for. We have two, we have a white one and then the blue one. The blue one is deader than the white one. We'll show you the white one later. Not everybody has that luxury. So what I'm suggesting is just be aware of it. Go into the middle of your room, get two pieces of wood and knock them together or even clap and listen to the amount of echo coming back. Is it going Because if it is, that's really annoying and that will create listening fatigue and no amplifier in the world will correct it. I know you can get some amplifier systems that make some adjustments for the room, but rubbish, you know, get the room right because there is no real, real adjustment for a poorly acoustic room. So, and other people say, yeah, well, I'm not getting much bass. I want, I want to get bigger speakers because I'm not getting much bass. In some rooms, it doesn't matter how big your loudspeaker is, if the room isn't long enough, if the bass isn't being absorbed at the end, and if it's, if it's coming back into the room out of phase, so you've got your, your wave going like this for your bass, if it's bouncing back in the room out of phase, it actually just cancels it out. Get bigger speakers, you'll even have less bass because actually it's just being beautifully cancelled out. So 
in our studio, as you can see, we, we have these big sacks in the corner which are absorbing base. Now, this is a very simple technique. You just get some Hessian sacks. I even sewed those or we sold them, sewed them together ourselves. And you get uh, some rock wall insulation and you and you wrap, put them inside these big sacks and you tie them up. Now, it's fine here because we're in this sort of attic room and it looks cool. That does a beautiful job and it makes an enormous difference. Now, if you don't believe me, listen to some bass tracks or put on a, a CD of different um frequencies and start listening in the lower frequencies and play music and go and crouch down in the corner of the room where the floor and the two walls meet in the corner and listen to the sound there and then stand up and move to the left and move to the right and move a fraction to the left and move a fraction to the right if you've got a sound pressure level meter just move it around with one tone going on like I don't know 400 hertz or 200 hertz or 100 hertz and move around the room and you'll see it changing the needle swinging backwards and forwards as it's suddenly loud in one place and low in another. If you're serious about hi-fi and you're serious about listening to music spend a bit of time doing this. There's a company called GIK and they specialize in reflection panels, absorption panels and actually if you contact their technical department, they will give you some simple tricks like some recordings on your iPhone or whatever, and you send it off to them and with the dimensions of your room and uh, some photos, and they will design some systems for you. Now, we make very simple panels ourselves. I mean, we don't sell them. We, we, I just had them made, but with just a simple six by four uh, wooden frame, centimeter frame. So you make the frames up like pictures so you can see them. Um, and then we put some rock wall lining in it or glass wall and on the back we seal them off on the back with hessian and then we put the um, the special fabric on the front which we use in blinds to stop the sunlight from coming in zonderdustering we call that in flemish i can't remember what it is in in english but um, it's rubber backed canvas basically you can get it in lovely colors but you can also organize uh, get canvas printed photographs or you can paint them yourself so just get some white canvas and paint them and make it a nice design get an artist friend of yours to come to up with some nice creation and if you put these on the walls in the right places or, or even on the ceiling and paint them the same color of the ceiling if you've got a room with a lot of bad echo and a hard marble floor and hard brick walls which are plastered you know some of these panels will make a massive difference and you'll notice it that in a room where there's sort of bad echo and bad acoustics you're more likely to have arguments with your family and friends or whatever because the brain is having to process all this echo it's like listening to an announcement on a station or an airport and you have to listen really carefully to hear what they're saying well that's what's going on in your listening room whereas if your listening room is relatively dead flat we mean by dead I, you know it means that there's no echo it's relaxing you can have a nice quiet conversation you don't have to raise your voice you don't have to worry and everything that comes out of your loudspeakers sounds beautiful so that's my real tip is to spend a bit of time on that because a simple rug on the floor with a little mat underneath the rug to to, to absorb a bit more an oil painting rather than a poster with a glass plate on the front uh, an oil painting with some sound then deadening a deadening material behind it fabulous that can make a huge difference covering your coffee table whilst you're listening with a little thick rug a special rug um, my wife made a lovely little rug for, for, for one of our tables when when we listen when I'm really seriously listening I can just put that on the table and enjoy my music and then when you want to have a, a coffee with friends you just whip it off and there it is so sometimes these simple adaptations can make a massive, massive difference and they will transform your system far more than anything else. Well, I hope you found that useful. Uh, again, feel free to reach out to us if you have any concerns or questions. We can't guarantee to get back to you all immediately, but we do answer every uh, inquiry that comes in. Thank you very much and uh, happy listening.